Hi everyone, thank you for having me. Um, my name is Emma Flynn. I'm from the University of Pittsburgh where I work in Dr. David Coe's lab. So in our lab, we develop computational tools for structure-based drug discovery. So in structure-based drug discovery, we want to use our knowledge of a target protein structure to find a ligand that can bind to this protein for some therapeutic effect. So how do we find this ligand? So there's two main categories of techniques. One is virtual screening. And in virtual screening, because you're screening, because you're screening databases of known commercially available molecules, then whatever you find is commercially available and ready for testing. But the drawback of this is that it takes a really long time to do this screening, and that time scales with the size of the database. The other category is de novo ligand generation. So recently, there have been deep learning models that have emerged that are capable of creating new ligands for a given protein pocket in just a matter of seconds. But the field has found some issues with the validity of these molecules and the synthesizability. And finding a synthesis pathway, if one exists for this molecule, is very time consuming. So in our lab, we're really excited about pharmacophore search, which is a subcategory of virtual screening that takes a fraction of the time. A, pharmaco a pharmacophore consists of spheres of interaction that are described by 3D coordinates and a feature type, such as a hydrogen donor. Um, and then the spheres of interaction can be customized to align with certain features in your target protein pocket that support ligand binding. So then you can use the pharmacophore to query databases of molecules in order to find results that match with your pharmacophore and eliminate a large fraction of the ligands to save a lot of time. So traditionally, these pharmacophores are made by using a reference ligand, as you can see here with our reference pharmacophore. And then domain expertise is required to basically tweak the pharmacophore so you can get a unique set of ligand results. So we wanted to design a way that we could more easily and faster generate pharmacophores that give us a set of high quality and unique ligand results when we query with them. So to do this, we created Pharmacoforge, which is a diffusion model that's capable of generating a pharmacophore for a given protein pocket with a user-specified number of centers. Um, so with Pharmacoforge, we're able to generate 30 plus pharmacophores in a couple of minutes. The animation here shows the sampling process for generating a new pharmacophore that's unique from the reference ligand, but is able to come up with ligands that will bind to this pocket as well. The main issue that we faced with this project was evaluating pharmacophore quality. So we can, have, we can measure the validity of the pharmacophore and make sure that there exists a corresponding structural feature in the pocket that will match with our pharmacophore centers. But a pharmacophore is really only as good as its performance in downstream screening tasks. So we screened with our pharmacophores and compared these results to de novo generated ligands, specifically pocketamol and diffSBDD, where pocketamol is an autoregressive based method and diffSBDD is also a diffusion method. Um, so we generated 30 plus pharmacophores for um, the uh, do data set, which consists of 102 protein targets. And then we screened the Kemble database with our pharmacophores and compared these results to the de novo generated ligands for all the do targets. So our initial results can be shown in the top half of this violin plot, the lighter color. Um, and this shows the minimization, which is the local optimal pose for the protein, for the ligand in the pocket. So from this, we can see that we perform about the same as diffSBDD, while pocketamol outperforms both methods. So we are still happy with this result, because this means that our pharmacophores are capable of finding ligands that bind with as, that bind with as high affinity or high predicted affinity as ligands generated specifically for the pocket. But one of the things that we notice when we visualize these molecules, the top performing ones from all methods, is that the generated ligands were often in highly strained poses and went very tightly into the pocket. Um, so we calculated the strain energy for all, of these, for all of these molecules and found that the generated ligands had a higher strain energy than those from the pharmac for query. So we re-minimized and docked and found the results on the bottom half, the dark color of the plot. And we see that with the D-strain molecules in the minimized poses, the pharmacophorage ones stay about the same, which makes sense because these are commercially available already existing compounds. But the generated ligands show a decreased affinity for the pocket because in order to have the high affinity, they needed to be in unnatural poses. So this is a promising result that shows that with Pharmacophorage, we're able to overcome some of the main problems facing de novo generation of ligands, and that our Pharmacophores are able to find quality ligands that bind with high predicted affinity to the pocket. If you're interested in learning more, please come see me at my poster. Thank you.